Hello everyone, this is Tom Fox and I'm the Compliance Evangelist. I'd like to welcome you to my January 2018 podcast series of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. But first, a word about this month's sponsor, Conversant. As the leading global provider of ethics and compliance cloud software, Conversant connects ethics to business performance by weaving ethics and values into everyday operations in over 600 of the world's largest companies. Its ethics cloud platform provides a suite of applications, Conversant Insight, Conversant's Helpline, Conversant Campaigns, Conversant Disclosures, and Conversant Third Parties that gives executives insight required to make proactive, informed decisions about their company's ethical health. Conversant's customers include Microsoft, Tesla, Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts, Capanini, and Under Armour, who care deeply about driving ethics into the center of their organizations. Check out more at conversant.com. If you have been following me over the past year, you know that I have gone on a one-year exploration of various components of a best practices compliance program. However, during this exploration, there were two very important documents released by the Department of Justice relating to a best practices compliance program. In February 2017, there was the Evaluation of Corporate Compliance Programs document, and in November 2017, there was the announcement of the new FCPA Corporate Enforcement Policy. Therefore, in this month of January, I'm going to lay out for you what should go into your best practices compliance program based upon the 10 hallmarks of an effective compliance program and these two documents. Over the next 31 days, I will be exploring the best way to more fully operationalize a compliance program using the most recent DOJ resources. I hope you will join me for the full 31 days as we engage in an exploration to a more effective compliance program. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Day 23, Updates and Feedback. One of the critical elements found in the evaluation is the need to use information you could obtain, whether through a risk assessment, root cause analysis, investigation, hotline report, or any other manner to remediate the situation which allowed it to arise. In an interview with Matt Kelly on his Radical Compliance podcast, former DOJ Compliance Counsel Wei Chen has said about the, evalu- said about the evaluation, we wanted people <clears throat> to see that we put a lot of emphasis on evidence and data. Don't just tell us you have a hotline. Show us how you know it's working and how you're using that information you gain from these hotlines. When you say you have a great compliance portal, don't just show us screenshots of it. Show us the hit rates and how you use that data to help refine how you communicate with your audience. The same is true for strong leadership by senior management and tone from the top. Chin stated, If you tell us you have a strong, talented top, show us what concrete actions your leaders have taken to personally demonstrate that. It's not just some words that say, but show the evidence. Here, I'm pleased to note this is another way of saying document, document, document. Chen emphasized the evaluation is not simply to be used or even considered as a checklist. More, however, uh, it is designed to have CCOs and compliance professionals think about their compliance programs by asking questions. Questions invite people to think. I call them evaluation questions. My goal here is to get people to really think about what they're doing, what goal they're trying to accomplish, and how they're, how they're going to measure the results How do they know it's working? I'm a big fan of asking questions. The result of that, I'm hoping is, the result of that is, I'm hoping people to really get to think about what they're doing and how they know they're successful at it. This all ties into the prong nine on uh, the evaluation of corporate compliance programs, which is entitled, periodic testing and reviews. One of the questions or series of questions is under the following category of evolving updates. How has the company updated its risk assessments and reviewed its compliance policies, procedures, and practices? What steps has the company taken to determine whether the policies, procedures, and practices make sense for a particular business segment or subsidiaries? 
I thought about how you could initiate feedback and then get that information or loop that feedback back into your compliance program. And I really was drawn to the OUDA feedback loop, which stands for Observe, Orient, Detect, and Act. It was developed by military strategist John Boyd, who realized that combat consisted of observing your circumstances, orienting yourself to your enemy's way of thinking and your environment, and deciding upon a course of action, and then acting upon it. Writer Alistair Kroll took this concept into a civilian realm, where he talked about the fact that the Oluda, Oluda loop is, in fact, a loop. So that the results allow earlier actions feedback into later, hopefully, wiser ones. For the CCO, this means your company co- can collect and organize, excuse me, and analyze information better, and then you can act on the information faster. One of the greatest impediments to using the OUDA feedback loop is the surplus of noise in our data. We need to capture and analyze it well, separating the digital wheat from the digital chaff, identifying meaningful undercurrents while ignoring meaningless flotsam. To do this, we need to move to a more robust system to put data in a more usable format. The first step is data collection, where the challenge is both the sheer amount of data coming in and its size. Once the data comes in, it must be ingested and cleaned. If it comes into your organization in an unstructured format, you may need to cut it up and put it into correct database format for use. What about the issue of uh, platforms, which are frameworks used to crunch large amounts of data more quickly? Here the key is to break up the data into chunks so it can be analyzed in parallel. Another technique is to build a pipeline of processing steps, each optimized for a particular task. Another important component is machine learning, and it's important to the data supply chain. We're trying to find signals within the noise to discern patterns. Patrick Taylor, CEO at Oversight Systems, calls this finding patterns in raked leaves. Humans can't find signals well by themselves, just as astronomers use algorithms to scan the night sky for signals, then verify any promising anomalies themselves. So too, you can use data, so can data analysts and indeed compliance professionals use machines to find interesting dimensions, groupings, or patterns within the data. Machines can work at a lower signal-to-noise ratio than people. Obviously, there are multiple vendors in the compliance space who bring this type of uh, machine learning to a wide variety of compliance topics, Uh, gifts, travel, entertainment spend, uh, third-party spend, third-party management, uh, financial components of risk, wide variety that you can tap into. Yet as important as machine learning is in big data collection and analysis, there's really no substitute for human eyes and ears, and I would add the human brain. Yet for many business leaders, displaying the data is most difficult because it is not generally in a readable form. It's important to portray your data in a visual style to help convey how you would analyze it going forward. Of course, having all this data is of zero use unless you act on it. And that seems to be the point of Wei Chen's remarks. Big data can be used in a variety of decision-making, from employment decisions around hiring and firing to strategic planning to risk management and compliance programs. But it takes a shift in compliance thinking to use such data. It advocates fast, iterative learning so that use of such big data uh, allows you to make a quicker assessment of impact of measured risks. A big data supply chain is an organizational OUDA loop, but unlike an OUDA loop, it is more than simply about the loop and plugging information as you move through it. Big data is mostly about feedback, that is, obtaining the impact of risks you have accepted. Here, think of how Ben Lachlan suggests you consider the entire process of the risk management protocol or process. For this to work in compliance, a company's compliance function needs to understand and choose a course of action based upon the results, then observe what happens and use that information to collect new data or analyze things in a different way. It's a process of continual optimization. 
So what are today's three key takeaways? Number one, innovation can come through a new way to think about and use data going forward. Number two, draw from the OUDA feedback loop, which stands for observe, orient, detect, and act, and bring those concepts into your compliance program. And finally, number three, always remember, with even with machine learning and analysis, there is no substitute for the human condition. That means human eyes, human ears, and most importantly, the human brain. This is Tom Fox. I hope you have enjoyed day 23 of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow for day 24, where I take up the topic of CCO, authority, and independence. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you for listening to this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program, sponsored by Conversant. I hope you will join me tomorrow, and indeed for the entire 31 days in January, while I will be exploring the best way to more fully operationalize your compliance program using the most recent resources the Department of Justice has communicated to us, the evaluation of corporate compliance programs, and the new FCPA corporate enforcement policy. This is Tom Fox. Thank you again for listening. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network.